games for everyone, Moonlight Detective here, and welcome to a game called Road Warding, a text adventure game that just looked really cool, and uh, yeah, it's a, it's really new, I think it only came out like three, like a week ago, or um, I don't know, I think it came out just like around a week ago, uh, and I thought it looked really cool, so I want to try it out. We're going to have to start a new game, I played about 15 minutes of it. And then I stopped and because I was like, okay, wait, I feel like something's wrong with my audio. I checked, my audio was going double, so I'm glad I stopped there so we can experience the whole thing. But I'm, I'll play about like, you know, 40 minutes or an hour of it. That way you get a good experience. Well, I guess uh, I'd recommend playing, watching this video with headsets or something, as they say, because it's very sensory, relaxing experience. Well, not relaxing, but because this game is a pretty, from, from I was looking at the images and saw the trailer. It's a, it's a pretty cool adventure game. So let's try it out. I'll make the same choice as I did before, to make it fair. Uh, I saw this, I said I leave safety. Well, I guess I'll read it out to you. Everyone knows to stay away from the wilderness. Most people will never risk a lonely journey. Road wardens not only accept the struggle, they embrace it. They deliver messages, assist merchants, burn human corpses, and impossible, get rid of the beasts and highwaymen. Live on the road, die young, or retire early. It's a dangerous job, a respectable one, and it pays well. So I leave safety at the walls. I won't restrict them. I'm going to keep going with that. All right, the wall is still standing. There are no wolves around, no stench of blood, good signs. This should be the place you're looking for. You're supposed to meet with a group of soldiers, but you hear no voices, no sounds of labor. The gate is ajar, but the camp is safe. They may keep away the goblins and pebbles, but not beast folk nor trolls, and the night is near. Your paw free breaths heavily, it was a long day. So I think I first said I dismount and sneak. And I'm also hurt. Your exhaustion some action will be a bit, but the weak will have a higher chance of dying in combat. Heavy boots hit the ground and the pain of bringing a lot of fine catches up with you. Stretch out, bring your back and legs comfort. All you want now is a table, a decent chair, a nice mug of beer, and some warm stew. Then luck, your axe won't be needed here. I push the gate slowly. And then. Uh, to begin this camp, doesn't let the power of plenty of wasted space. The fire pit is cold. Two people are sitting at the table. Two people are sitting at the table, tired and disheartened. They're looking in different directions, paying no attention to one another. One of them is holding a cup. At most, you know the quiet, you notice the quiet humming. You recognize the melody of a lighthearted drinking song from the city harbor. So... People didn't notice the pattern of clues, the short dry, a valley of maybe a minute away from sparse which could dense to climb up the hills. Best to trail us a few more years for our ground for our today. And I said, didn't look at much there and I entered. There's a few breaths to glance your direction. The first one greets your eye with a wave of his hand. There's bags under his eyes. His, bare, his beard is messy despite a simple shirt. He's wearing durable, decent boots. A mace with head covered in iron. Hangs at his side, but he doesn't reach for it. I take a look at the second soul. She's like you. She's wearing a gamberson. A, a gamberson. A gamberson. But hers is a bit loose, as if she took it off a corpse. Her head is shaven, and she's protecting herself from flesh-eating bugs. As if she's protecting herself from flesh-eating bugs. Yet kind. Her eyes are weary, yet kind. She smiles. Considering the squabble sitting here half a year ago, these two surely looked apart. There should be more than eight, you believe. Let them speak first. And I see an unarmed traveler in this godforsaken crap hole. <laughs> Make me, makes me just a tiny bit hopeful. A uh, bearded man's voice strong and timid. He'll be staying night with us, I guess. We're soldiers, he and I, the armed woman. Her moment switches from half asleep to relax. We'll do our best to keep this camp safe, but if you were to take first watch, you'll be a huge help. Travels out to help each other out, wouldn't you say? And uh, look to me. Fantastic, she rubs her hands together. I don't remember the last time I had more than half a night's sleep. That was for midnight, should be the calmest. She wakes up, anything happens, man. Flash your white smile. Easy to wake us up. Just yell. Get you from this mug. It's about the lieutenant. I'm not afraid to question. I just friendly. There's different options you can do. Uh, this is friendly, playful, distanced, intimidating, and vulnerable. I just friendly. The woman lets out a lot of sight. Just up against some steps forward. She means a little to support her side. Most definitely can. And you and I, though holding this rank, is still someone new to me. Are you a messenger? Did you lose your mouth? She enters your curiosity. Are you looking for help? I mean, you were a road war and house story outside. Really, the soldier struggling for it. That explains that you got here in one piece all by yourself. Better bring your beast here, as Lieutenant. We have no hay, but I bet it, it dreams of dropping its saddle. A long pause. I'm Tulia, by the way. She reached out her hand. I shake her hand. I'm not gonna be too. And I think I said, I just, I just put mm, lights. There you go. I was confident that shake is slight. Just keep your horse away from the tent. She steps away. We don't need to smell it's done. If you want to make sure that I was right to his feet, you got no tent to spare. You have to use a blanket or something. No problem. I enjoy observing the stars. You walk through the gate. Your mount looks around and snorts anxiously. Not many humans could ride a horse. It's not only taller than you, but also bulky, as heavy as it is strong. You can get in the saddle without it within a single breath. Most people wouldn't know where to even begin. From every side, it's a wall of flesh. Horses were brought to the dragon woods from the conquest in the south, but they can travel for a long time. But it won't outrun some of the local monsters. Your puffin needs to survive without two. 
without it, you too would be lost. Now the granite ones feel at ease. As you step towards, you scald him with another snore. You scratch the bottom of his neck with strength and confidence, just the way it likes it. Humans see useful animals, and even pets and monsters in the sky. It's getting emotionally attached to them is believed to lead humans to their doom. But no horses need companionship. Speak so gently and lead to camp. Uh, you end up next to the fire pit, removing the saddle, it makes the horse snicker with relief. You take a couple of minutes to examine his back just case. While the riding equipment is not that heavy for such a strong animal, with enough time it starts to shape. Which has something better than, than shabby grass. You should look for an inn. I'm back. And this is where you can choose your class. Um, you haven't brought many things, you lost all the sacks. Well, okay, first of all, you have no rope left, made the soldier could share, could share one. It shouldn't cost more than dragon bone. So I've tried to say you on a few valuable possessions. I want to be a scholar, because it's uh, pretty interesting. So I'll be a scholar. And this is uh, the inventory. Yeah. I have, oh, I have healing potion, food rations, merch bells, pouch for coins, gamberson, travel set, and a weapon. Okay. Uh, you inspect your water skin. It appears the is still here, just in case you take a look. Yeah, it's all my stuff, blah, blah, blah. And this is what I can do. Um, bros just said previously, you sit down with them. I joined them, take a look at them. Think about it when you eat them, I sit down. Still, which took me, including the meal. I took them, I joined them. It's cold, we were mad with meal eating, times hardship. It's well filled with water, hogwash, and blueberries. Well, you with the meal, even humble ones, beyond their duty. Those just live with and for their companions, constantly on the move from one part of the realm to another, making sacrifices to protect their group as they face dozens of hideous creatures. Their lives are filled with discipline, hardship, and camaraderie. 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 Yeah. Road wardens, on the other hand, learn how to work by themselves. They seldom engage in open combat, but patrolling the same roads for years. Help the settlement stay in touch, but also maintain commerce. Settle down, forge friendship when there are no laws to follow. They use their own judgment. They different responsibilities, different lifestyles. Stunning food makes you strong, salvation won't lie to you. Uh, to restore vitality while resting, you find spies in the inventory. Yep. Uh, quickly, not focusing on the taste, and speak with Tulia. She focuses on her and chooses her words carefully. She looks away when she gathers her thoughts. Before I can tell you less than I would like to, than I would like to, and less than I should, she nods forward to the other soldier. As you can see, there's not a lot of us left. At the beginning of summer, there were eight of us, including our previous lieutenant. Five are dead, one is run away in tears. Also, strangers in this land, as a granted. A piece of information might help me do my job. Man leans forward, his legs shake nervously. He sounds like a kid asking a bard to sing one more story, tell a joke, or do a magic trick. Over takes escape from boredom. His untrimmed beard hides a much younger face than you originally thought. What did the officials tell you? Expect not much. Sure, I consider it to be relevant. He tells soldiers how little guidance he receives. This area is too far away from Holden. From Hovlavin. Hovlavin. To keep it under control, you will warn that's untamed and unknown. Who knows how many villages or bandits or monsters may be in these un unmapped hills and forests. From time to time, new people come here to look for boundless opportunities. Most of them never return. They turn to walk the corpses to find out what they're looking for. No soul could tell me, so I was looking for your guidance. So then drink some cob across the ranks. So see one day. See your chair makes you feel doubt you'll find a couple of fish. Okay, so this is where I left off. I asked like three questions here, and this is where I left off. So, um, let's get to asking. I think the first thing I asked was which squad's mission. Ten looks at your eyes, you know the usual making the keep roll safe, keep people alive. So it might be important to know what they tried to accomplish. Can't really tell you. Let's just say it'd be nice to have a reliable outpost somewhere nearby. A place where you can always find a group of fighters that want to protect you and name the law. Just head back. Now if you have any other questions. Um what to your squad? Man shrugs. Bandits happen and monsters. A strong band though, his companion cheaps in. We got to the peninsula in spring, we saw some people living in this camp. The lieutenant decided to avoid it and look for a den. We had to travel through the night for a bit. The bearded soldier scoffs and crosses his arms, but she carries on. If he had decided otherwise, we would have all died that day. The innkeeper explained that the camp's trapped, that the army must pretend to be soldiers, stay there at night, lose everything now. So like slave hunters. Besides, very much so. They killed some and took others away. Who knows where? They were letting the northerners go, hoping to avoid their wrath. It kind of worked as a soldier. We asked them for help, but they refused. We had to clear the entire camp on our own, and that's why three of our people died. Don't exaggerate. It's not like the lieutenant didn't make a mistake. He wanted to get rid of them and take over their camp, but we didn't know our enemy well enough. We outnumbered, and they had an ice mage among them. She looks at you. At least we cleared the road, saved lives. Major monsters as well. None that was surprising. Those of us who survived skimmers were too young, too inexperienced to spend a summer in this place without a good leader, and they didn't trust me. One of them caught by a treant. Other one ignored my orders and forced us out of ritual hunt, so a bear tore in pieces. I just tried to act tough, didn't tell us they had cut his hand while cleaning his gamerson. That's out of gas and chuckle. We had to cut it off. He was so ashamed that he decided to walk north, find new life, disappear. Idiot. What a colorful journey, the man tried to shoot from his mug. It's empty. Makes place safer. Barely. Too easy. It's time. No, it was worth the, it was worth the lives and effort. Okay, so yeah. I think that was all the questions I asked. So now everything's new to us. Let's go. Um, I think, uh, should I ask for a rope? Mm. Wish I know. I'll tell you what I know, and you'll be the judge, says the lieutenant. 
How long did it take you to get here from the city on a decent palfrey? I guess it would be three, four days. When you confirm, she said continues from, she continues. From here, you can reach the coast in about a day, as long as you don't make any stops. Do you know the situation why no ships can get here? You nod. The sea route always allows Hovlov and officials to keep in touch with the coastal villages, collect taxes, move the soldiers, collect lumber, deliver tools, but maintaining order on a wild coast, such as this one, is like filling the ocean depths with coins. Because the rocks, you can hardly stop ship five miles from the shore, and boats can't get much closer. She nods. I don't know how much li I don't know. I don't know much about fishing, but there's not that many people living by the shore, and they don't crave to stay in, in touch with city folk. As she pauses, her companion carries on. No soul from the north ever came to the camp, but when we travel to the roadside inn, pelt of the north, they're happy to trade and to play dice. Why not just stay in one of the settlements? Man clears his throat. Oh, I don't know, I think so. Man clears his throat. I mean, you know we're here to guard this road. This camp is our post, and well, he turns toward, towards Tulia. She lowers her voice. Don't take the wrong way, Moonlight, but are you a devout soul? Like most city folk, I believe that people should unite their strength to overcome the threats of nature and dark magic. Everyone will be judged for both good and evil deeds. I'm part of the United Church. Many years I support a monastery that does its best to advance mankind's spiritual growth, artistic herbalism, and magical research. I follow the teachings of an order of, oh, not order of truth. I always, order of truths are always bad in games, because the people that just want complete control, usually. For a small village, for me, the freedom of shelf, numia, and soul are the main virtues of my life. My community is unique and independent, and so are its members. I have a place in my fellowship. I have a strong connection to my nature and spirit. I follow the path of my ancestors. Some of the beliefs you may be called sinister and treacherous by the city folk. You probably call me a pagan. No evidence of the right existence and all the mystical tales explain magic. No, I'm not. Uh, I'll say this is this is pretty good. Or this. Like this is pretty good. Yeah. Oh, I see. She looks away. I don't know much about the river fate, but I'm sure we're not that different. I'm unite myself. Uh, she says with sort of pride in her voice. She follows the United Church. Just explain what you were thinking. Could be our disquieting. Every few words, she taps the table with her fingers. The additions won't help them negotiate with the officials here. She starts to draw lines with her index as she's pointing at an invisible map. Pennsylvania is connected with roads like a big circle in the northwest. You find a weird village at a bar. It's not exactly pagan. I don't think so. And even as a priest who claims to be an Eremite like yourself. Eremite? Wait, I thought I just clicked like I was for the people. Oh, can I can I go back? <laughs> I thought I was just like saying, yeah, I, I don't really, I'm just for the people and whatever's best. Yeah, all right, I uh, I selected it. Nothing I can do. Let's keep going. They do crazy stuff. Her companion chips in. They use the dead to cut down trees and dig in soil. Once I saw it, I begged to never. Say, okay, I picked the wrong choice. You've heard tales such as this one since you were a child. If any, isolated, if any isolated settlement managed to survive without a city's influence, customs and traditions grow more and more alien. Every generation learns how to adapt to the dangerous conditions they have to deal with, and the rustic pagan traditions muddy their river of fate. The United often warns members about the crazy druids, necromancers, and blood mages, the brings of doom, the traitors to man humankind. Any monsters worth mentioning? It's all sorts of beasts. The man starts to count his fingers. Goblins, trinets, cats, large and small. Runners, howlers, wolves, spike boars, morphin eaters, griffins, but we managed to stay away. Some can catch up with the mountain, with most mountains. Tolia totally glances at her companion. The palfrey should be fine. The trees are so tall that the fine creatures keep to the coast and mountains. There's not that many humans around, and the animals aren't busy fighting among themselves. They fight more for food than territory. The soldier cracks knuckles. Don't provoke them and ride fast. Just count on luck. We have to speak with necromancers. We see why we're not eager to go there if we could avoid it, the lieutenant chuckles. Maybe they'll be more welcoming to a road war. The roads are dangerous with little to no shelters. People need your help. Minister turns back and points a finger to the northwest. You're running to the undead village. You'll get to an inn. You'll get to an inn first and soon. So they not. It's pelt of the north. It's a safe place. You can talk to the innkeeper, the guards, ask them about the road. How about the east? So there's off the camp, off across the camp. Hard to tell. We went there only uh, once. There are hills, forests, rivers. We saw a tunnel scoped in leaves and branches, but we didn't enter it. Wilderness all around. Okay, I'm afraid we can't do more for you. What up to the previous? Toya takes a deep breath. Aren't you a bit late for a rescue mission? We haven't heard from him for almost a year. The soldiers speak for a bit between themselves, trying to get their story straight. They affirm that he had stopped by their camp a few times and stopped showing up at all in early summer. The bearded soldier starts to scratch the table with the tip of his knife without looking at you. I don't remember his voice. Always busy, drowning in things to take care of. He would sit somewhere, sharpen his sword, fix his loud mail, clean clothes, write notes on that wax table of his. Yep, and leave it dawn. Unlike us, Asteria never gets bored. Tolia lets out a joyous chuckle. 
he's secretive, but some of the locals speak with him, speak about him warmly. Maybe he just doesn't like us. I feel like you're not sure if he's dead or not. If anyone knows, they won't tell us. Maybe someone is keeping him in a basement. The man carves a passion. I have seen him or sorry. Something ate him, I ate them, I bet. The officials have hired you, right? They don't expect him to return. Richard Roadworms often use four-legged meat-eating saurins as their mounts. They have to be tamed and trained since they're hatching. But unlike horses, can easily defend himself from many monsters. Is your palfrey is fast and reliable, and will suddenly seek a seat to an instant passerby. Know what he's looking for? Maybe he left you a message. Neither of us had any insight into his dealings, says Tolia. Our predecessor left me no clues. We, almost, we also took a look at Asterian stuff. Wait! She raised her open palm. I almost forgot. He stands up and heads to a nearby tent. He has kids in a village near a Hovloven. I was planning to take all these things there. A pouch, sex spear, a decent bow, some potions, quite a treasure. She glanced at you, but I'd much prefer to bring them the truth about their father. So we find out what happened to him exchange for stuff. Here's catch. She dusts off the hilt of her sword. We've hired a messenger to ask the commanders for further orders, and she hasn't returned. And you know nothing about her. So she either ran away or something happened to her. She sighs with resignation. We're meant to stay here until fall. What do you think? Come see us. Tell us what you've learned about the man, and we'll get back to Ho Hove Levin together. You think about your real mission. You're planning to return to Hove Levin in the early fall anyway. If he's alive, I don't think he's going to be happy about me taking away all of his possessions. You're trying to find the road worn. True, but he's considered dead. I doubt he'll spare you anything. Who knows? He might just find you might just find shell lying on the roadside tomorrow. He wears a me he wears a male. He uses a spear mostly, maybe five feet tall, about stout, long red beard, short hair, pale face. Rarely smiles. She glances at her companion. But after he adds nothing, but after he adds nothing. Oh yeah, after he adds nothing, after she makes him. Sits down, stretches out her legs. So find out what happened to him. Dead, alive, dead, alive, left. Just let me know. Hmm. Lost my rope. Could you spare me one? You're in luck. She has towards one of the crates and moves to a side large linen sack. Revealing rope, she brings it back. And also, I sits down in her chair. Take it. I was playing leave it behind. Take a closer look. Fine rope. I could be nice. Yeah, why not? So he leans forward and rests her forearms on her thighs, looking uh, down with clasped hands to meet your eyes. I normally refuse, but we need some decent food. Every day I'm searching through our groats, looking for worms and putridity. We forage, but it's not a bad spot. Some food rushes will brighten up a foggy day. For now, you leave the rope on the table. Hmm. How did you become lieutenant? Not much of a story, honestly. She looks at her hand, which is currently rolling a mug over the table. In the city, there's a strict order of what should I call it. She exchanges look with her companion, but he can't help her. Well, leadership succession, I guess. Hovlavin chief selects commanders. Those select lieutenants, and those put their soldiers in order of priority. If lieutenant dies, they get replaced by the next soldier in line. So your successor. Nah, not exactly. We fought the bandits. Our lieutenant was hit by a slingshot. His boyfriend jumped to help him, but failed to protect either of them from his spell. It's like a ball of ice that hung above them exploded, piercing their heads completely, avoiding their shield. Really unpleasant. She pauses. Oof. Jumping like that saved man in the middle of an attack does sound like a wise. I'm not gonna judge a dead man. Uh, and you were the third one in line, is that right? Basically, yeah, it's just about enthusiasm. I didn't plan to become leader, though. I'll get the moment when we return to the city. I prefer to follow anyway. Okay. You guys should know about this camp? The story is brief. Some merchants built the camp to have an extra stock for mules and donkeys just between the inn and the southern villages. There's plenty of grass here and a pond nearby. But a pinsuela grew more dangerous. Uh, grew more dangerous. The camp stood abandoned from time to time, serving as a shelter for travelers. The bandits came here in spring, further paralyzing the exchange of information between the northern and southern settlements. Since these highwaymen are no more, excuse me, the situation may reverse time with hell. You can sleep here wherever you want. The man concludes their tale. Though don't expect to wake up without pain in your back. Oof, okay. If you're me, where'd you go next? Soldier answers quickly. To the inn, of course. He grabs his empty mug. The one northwest from here. You can't afford the room. The main hall is free of charge. Locals rarely gather there. The northern road is much more travel than Stolia, but hunters will tell you about this and that. And you have a chance to introduce yourself. The innkeeper can listen and know as many souls. He says, I can make good for a first impression on him. He smirks. Avoid cheap jokes. Stick to trade. Don't waste time. Show that you can be a light on. Okay. Okay. It's gonna be prepared for the night. I agree. Tolia totally says, sighs of relief. And may you do better than Asterian did. Stay vigilant. Should we send you? Shadow the mask with soldier. Okay. Our guy just text. Him. For your help, you go to the barrel and splash water in your face. It makes you even more aware of how much you need a bath. After the night, it won't get worse. Or is already napping, still too anxious to lay down. They tell you they have a better chance to influence others. I prepare for my watch. Soldier in the shirt is eager to guide you. Just observe the area. There's plenty of griffins around. They won't try to jump over the palisade. Palisade. So, uh, probably 
better watch out for the apes. They climb up and carry out any food they find. Uh, and there's this one really loud werelic that keeps smelling the wall, but has never tried to get in. Point to the gate. The lieutenant and I will block the entrance. They're quite heavy, so if anyone comes here looking for shelter, better call us to help you out. And if this someone is being chased by wolves or anything, better throw them the rope instead. He scratches his head. If it gets cold, feel free to make a fire. And the best place is on the watchtower. You may want to put a blanket there or something. The watchtower. He gives you a long, puzzled look. Oh, here. Points at a pile of crates. Just climb up to the tallest one. You have a great view of the northern side. A more dangerous side. And also, I know you're tired after all that writing. Points at the tent on the other side of the camp. I may have a couple hours just sleeping on the ground, if you wish. Go there after me. Go there after me and rest just this once. At least I have a pallet inside. Uh... Smile? Yeah, thanks, man. Thanks. Put your blanket on the tallest crate and sit down. So, yeah, that's the watch thing right there. Uh, the night is warm. Sporadic. Summer breeze brings gentle refreshment from time to time. Oh, from gentle refreshment. From time to time, your back aches. You force yourself to keep your eyes open. The light of the moon helps you focus on the tall grasses. Most of the time, you spot smaller critters and birds, but there are exceptions. At one point, the three horned deer is trying to challenge one another for the clash in their antlers. A, a two legged dragonling appears, leading its much smaller offspring. The furry beast tries to intimidate the predators with roars and aggressive head movements. After a few moments, both sides walk away, slowly, not willing to wish to fight nor to admit their defeat. Don't let's track them. Keep looking. Hear the death screams of distant prey and the maiden calls of monkeys. Runners are chasing a gray hare. A group of musk coxen, muck, musk coxen, or musk oxen? I think it might be musk oxen. No, oh, that wouldn't make sense. Musk coxen. Oh, hold on, hold on. I'm looking this up. I, I know. Musk oxen. Musk oxen. Okay, there you go. Lazily chew the grass, preparing themselves to sleep. A dust fox is running together with the lynx, play, making playfully scree playful screeches. Thankfully, you never have to intervene. You just sit there, watching the not-so-distant forest, trying to outlast your sleepiness. You can only guess how much time has passed. When you feel you've had enough, you climb down and go to the tent, waking up the bearded man. With just a couple words, you confirm that nothing important has happened. I've got my things squeezed into the tent, use my bag's pillow, put my- yep, all that. So we intend to let them stuff the dreams with as much welcome rest. The pallet keeps the cold soil away. The moonlight saves the outside world from the eerie gloom. This is your own breath to find a comfortable position. Your job starts tomorrow. Focus on the real goal of my journey. Uh, new journal question. Explore the pencil. The merchant guild wants you to take control of this realm. Your wandering duties are secondary. First and foremost, you need to explore the Pensuela. Learn about the territory, resources, and threats. Get to know with the locals, and if you can, convince them to consider negotiations with the whole lobby. Officials and traders could... Officials and traitors, could the drives resist the soldiers or be a threat to the priests of the United Church? Are there any forbidden practices that need to be eradicated, such as blood magic, necromancy, robbery, or slavery? Is that time, 30 days to be exact, I need to be as thorough as I can. Once you finish your... Re your why? I know that word, I just can't say it because it's 3 o'clock and my brain's slow right now. Reconnaissance. Oh wow, no, this is reconnaissance. You should speak with Tulia and return to Hovlavin. There you will report back to your employers and get your award. In the meantime, you have your goal to pursue. pursue. I need to get some extra coins that can help a person I care about. You got some extra coins so I can retire early and live in prosperity and safety. Got enough connections among the local leaders I use them to become a major player in the merchant guild. I remember as the soul who brought peace and order to the hero. I'm a hero. I just want to help you. Make this safe for local and newcomers alike. To find a new life for myself. A different path I want to be. Uh, this sounds pretty cool. Or this, you know, like not just just be a person that uh, wants to help and be remembered. Hmm. I just want to help people. You can't travel during the night. Press the sleep button to rest. You're half asleep. Senses are catching the sounds of the wild forest. Your instincts keep you alert and anxious. Through the pleasant, humid, late summer air, event evens it out slowly. You're thinking about your goal. You need to gather your strength. You can spend the night in a borrowed tent, something special that will protect you from the wind and rain, and the ground won't be painfully hard nor cold. Oh god, sleep. Ah, there we go. You're looking by sunlight, well rested and ready. Without haste, you gather your things. After only a couple of breaths, you notice a weird smell like a roast. No burning meat, burning rotten meat. Disgust crossing your consciousness. You exit the tent. Your horse is looking around nervously. Your bag's where you had left them. You see an open gate. Let's see what's happening. 
Both soldiers are standing there near a humble pyre. The man in the shirt looks at it contemplatively. Contempl- Oh my gosh. Brain, please. Contemplatively. Tulia is the first one to address you. Moonlight, uh, Moonlight, she agrees you with a nod. We use the horse's manure for the flames. Don't worry about cleaning it up. You see a corpse among the flames. It's possible to tell if it belongs to male or female, but it was an adult. The burning process won't be over for a couple more hours. A traveler or an undead? The latter, a young one. She lacked the um, tononia to understand that she couldn't get inside the camp without climbing. I stabbed her with a spear from a safe distance. She shifts her weight. One more fog and she'd be a real threat. Even now, it only took a couple hits to knock her down. Sooner or later, every human shell wakes up, gaining more strength as each soul it devours, and each moment it spends in the fogs. Burning the dead is not just a religious practice. It is a, necess- it's a necessity. Soldiers, priests, villager- village mayors, even road wardens making a large pirate takes a lot of time, but it saves lives. So he causes undead as she. Most unites hesitate to do so. I mean, leave. Run away from the reek, huh? I don't blame you. She walks with you for a few steps. Find us here if you need us, or if you learn what happened to Asterion. There's enough ground here for you to rest. Safe travels. These words make you stop. An old farewell marked in a number of songs and tales. But yet you hear no scorn in Tulia's voice. There are many acts of kindness like this one you're going to experience in the days to follow. She returns to the pyre. I prepare myself for the journey. So I miss the fact that your mouth is already saddled and warmed up. You double check the equipment, but you don't need to fix anything. Soldiers were diligent, make normally preparing any palfrey for a long journey. It takes a lot of time. You put on your gam- your gumberson, gamberson, and make sure that your axe is tightly attached to your belt. You begin the saddle. The palfrey knickers, ready to leave. It's time for you to get to the crossroads north from here. Uh, travel. All right. Uh, hold on. Is that is that going a little bit overboard? I don't want to get too much. We're good. We're good. Wait, let's go a little longer. So north. Even at a later hour, you wouldn't expect to meet any travelers in the valley. The warm summer breeze lures your mouth forward, but the serene chirping of birds quickly replaced by distracting screeches and gurgles coming from further down the path. You soon find the pack of four-legged griffins. They're larger than foxes that merge features of birds and furred beasts. Each one is of a different size, coat, and colors, and their temperaments are just as varied. Their fronts are covered with vivid feathers, while their weirs have darker fur. Their wings are massive, making them impressive jumpers, but they're too heavy to fly. About two dozen beasts are yelling, brawling, and chasing each other around the block, around, uh, around, blocking your path. Consider my options. You can't the forest blindly. If these are the creatures we're to chase after you, the thickest will be the disasters for your horse. No reason why travelers stay as close to the main roads as possible and why eventually moving groups. Usually the safest approach would be to stay where you are and just wait for the pack to get hungry. It may ever take up to a couple of hours. Just think about your conversation with Tulia. You got a lot to do and time will be of the essence. There's random chances? <laughs> wow, okay, this this game's gonna get interesting. So like, what I could do here, I could stay here, but something random could happen and like they might come over and just attack me. I wanna go time with the essence. I gotta go to the innkeeper, I gotta find people are alive, someone could die. Oh wait, what's this? In case you saw the location, I like unique interactions. Okay. I mix black powder with gland that grows nearby and the dry skunk serum from my bag. Once I ignite it and throw it at the griffins, they'll scatter. Okay, never mind. No need for the randomness. Let's just go this one. Most city folk feel you can learn about your abilities in the character sheet. Let's check our abilities real quick. After years of spending old codices and training to help the local villages to make this safe for the locals and newcomers alike. You're literate, your education helps you solve many mysteries with an existing alchemic table and primary range you can brew uh, useful palms and potions. Okay. Uh, the odor of the plants make you feel dizzy, but what's more important is the griffins have wolf-like sensitivity smells and noises. A few of the beasts turn their heads towards you as you approach the bag with a, as you approach the pack with a small bag in your hand. You ignite your missile and throw it forward. At first, the creatures surround the source of smoke, but then growl in disgust. Even when their beaks to the ground, they flee, allowing you to continue your journey. Continue your journey. Come on, the horse, cover my nose. I really need to find a proper alchemy set. There we go. Okay, no need for a random chance. Smarts. Extract your achievements and your journey of force. There was splits. According to the, what the soldiers told you, you may find a safe thing by turning left. For it's right, it's lush and the trail of grown. Because you used to have this song. How did it go? The harshest pathway leads to the dragon's lair. Those search for treasure, do you truly dare? 
The sound in front of you doesn't make your situation much clearer. It's put here by someone who can't write, or folks who can't read, covered in old red paint. It points east, blood there, as people say data to be found. It's not a soul that's forgotten. So look at my horse. What's his name? Um Crescent. Crescent and moonlight. Crescent is peaceful as the stroke is made. Maybe we can help you choose a path, but you spent many years together. Happy to go on. It takes a couple steps forward. It's about a few berry shrubs and wild cabbages, but they still need at least two weeks to get maturity. I'm I kinda want to go. Wait. Yeah, so I kinda wanna go east. Yeah. Play the road. Cres crescent trops when it has a chance, but more often it walks. Forced to jump over larger branches while blocking the path. The nearby lake is surrounded by thirsty wildlife. I observe the dark forest and ready to jumps at me. Why not? Let's get a little a little I probably shouldn't because I'm not a fighter, I'm only an alchemist, but let's see. A couple stone slabs turn to a hut like shape when the ancient chapels raised by the priests of the United Church in the days of few soldiers and even fewer shelters. The dolmens proved to be especially durable due to the conditions they offered were harsh, though the conditions they offered were harsh. The entrance was barely wide enough to let you walk aside. It was meant to keep a large beast away, including your palfrey. You can't spend the night here, just mind look around. I approached the hourglass carved into stone. Let's uh let's just let's let's go inside. The beams of light get through the gas between the rocks, but you hardly see anything. Torch filled with some smoke, but a candle will suffice. You wonder how many travelers were sitting on the cold rocks, observing the interest of fighting with their heavy eyelids. I look around. What are you looking for? A paying attention to. Whoa! I didn't know the game was like this at all! Um. I don't know! It's an old. Okay, let me think. It's an old hut. And it's an old shack just in the middle of nowhere. Um, what would I be looking for? I, mean, I just, I just kind of want to look around. I, I'm not looking for anything particular coming in here. I just want to like look, like what do they have in here? Let's just look for. Um, maybe herbs or something, right? I mean, I wouldn't mind finding something. I don't know. Would there really be anything in here? Let's see. Need fire, I can't understand you. Let me try something again. Um, book. Is there a book in here? Uh, rock. <laughs> Anything. Some parts got covered with a single massive slab. There are parts of uh, free of any form. You see small yellow star rocks. In one spot, you found the remains of charred wood. Oh, okay. Private floor is littered with the remains of no campfire, and now more than a couple months old. See dust, burnt bones, wall and spots covered with soot. Bones? Can I like examine them? No. Hmm. Plant? Is there like any uh, plants in here or anything? Is there like it in here? Uh, person? I don't think there's a person here. I don't think there's a person here, but just in case, there could be someone in here with me. No. Sit. Oh, letters, yeah. Letters. There we go. That's why you keep looking. A large part of the wall is covered with engravings. It's difficult to figure out what they are meant to portray, but one picture is obvious, oblivious to you. Uh, obvious to you. A, a long arrow pointing down. Parts of the writing as well nearby is covered with soot. Knowledge! I understand what's written here. The images and letters are a combination of two separate texts. First one's written with words of a deer and belongs to an era as old as the dolmen itself. It's almost possible to decipher it, but you can make sense of it by connecting some words in the general structure. It was a prayer or a spell asking for a safe road. The other messages are maybe a couple years old. While they use the same alphabet, they try to express the modern city tongue. It's a list of wares, something portrayed by images and their value in dragon bones. Some of the pictures and are used as an obscene insult. See, for example, the head of a griffin or a sketch of a wolf. Someone was not happy with the prices they saw. 
One passage is especially interesting. Trap door payment. Trap door? The small is various spots, but the most interesting area tends to be hidden beneath the old campfire. Move all your ash pieces of wood, you find a well preserved plank. Dig around finding a solid trap door. Let's go! Oh, this game, this game's cool. And look, I didn't even realize. Every time we find something, there's more stuff. This game's cool. Okay, uh, let's break it. Take your axe and realize that the padlock may be, uh, may be much easier to break through. The wooden plank's even a bit moist, are in great shape. Look for right angle and make three strong swings. If an encouraged clank, the padlock falls off. What's inside? You have the hatch, and the heavy human air brings to an abandoned farm cellar. Your candle allows you to estimate that the tunnel is roughly 15 feet deep. There's no ladders you can use. You think about lowering the rope, but you realize that one of the brick walls covered large holes and uses vertical stairs. You know, sound comes from the tunnel, but the moldy walls and low cobbles are not very welcome. I climb down. I don't think there'll be anything down here. You have to move slowly, learn a new route. You have the cold, moist wall, seeking support for your boots. It doesn't take long before you feel comfortable enough to jump down, then light up another candle. Both the walls and the floor are made of stone slabs. You see no movement, no other source of light. The short tunnel leads you to a small room. Alright. The room smells of rotten wood and fungi. The abandoned junk is scattered on the ground and shelves. Earthenware jars, rotting scraps of linen or leather, wooden plates, bones for carving, and rusty iron tools. While these odds and ends may be years or decades old, the basement could just be just as ancient as the main floor of chapel. The one thing that seems to be uniquely fresh and durable is a small wooden box held together by a few fiberboards. I think I can take the box. I don't think anyone's been in this place for a long time. I don't think I'm stealing anything. I don't think anyone has been into this place for a very long time, so I, I think it's good. It does feel empty, but it's light. Shake for a bit, try and find it with sight. You can't open boxes without cutting cords. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, yeah, hold on. There's cords on it and everything. I'm going to keep it in one piece. Use life for can memorize the holes. You climb down quickly. You found a locked box. Use life again. You climb up quickly. Is that it? Yeah. All right, so let's see this. It's the most common religious sign in city folk, adapted by the United Church, or is the truth in the majority of fellowships. It's used in temples and during the funeral rites, but also to decorate codices or jewelry. The winged hourglass portrayed the ephemerality of life and the rigid of time. When possible, they're made of steel, signifying the strength of humankind's determination and innovation. It is a place of faith. I should touch the hourglass and pray. It's a ray. The real believers don't need special places to pray. Well, that's kind of fair. Yeah, why not? Cuts in observing the area. Not for me to do it. That was cool. I did not, I had no idea the game was like that. Like, that's honestly really cool. That you can, like, that was just me typing in stuff and trying to figure out what I find. That was so cool. Oh, that was awesome. So we can continue east, or we can go back. I kind of want to continue east. Well, well, the thing is, I'm on the hardest difficulty. We have to worry about nightfall. When nightfall comes and I have no shelter, like, there's going to be stuff, I think. I haven't, again, I've come into this game blind. I just saw this game. I was like, this game looks cool. So people that made Lacuna made it, which is a cool detective sci-fi game. So I was like, well, let me check it out. But... Let's go. Let's keep on. Who knows? I might find a person on the road that knows this locked box. They could uh, tell me. Oh God! Neglected path barely finds any space among the, all the, the hills, trees, and streams. There's a deer on the ground, lying in a red puddle, surrounded by a small pack creatures with no your presence. Quickly, I saw eight of them with thick furs and shades of brown, gray, and black, and hairless faces with small eyes and large mouths, currently stained by the blood of their prey. Some of them move on all fours, while others comfortably stand on two feet. They are two, they are two to three heads shorter than you, but it's your mount which truly towers over them. I see how a couple of the beasts take a few steps back, grunting and glancing at one another. The ones with gray fur shouts, and the other ones move toward the rocks and sticks, which are piled down the road. They hold them awkwardly and some struggle to maintain a straight posture, leaning on their new weapons for support, and almost all of them spread to your left and right, blending with the shrubs loudly, only two of the apes still standing still. Ah, I'm gonna get hurt. Like, I feel like if I fight them, like, they're gonna hurt me. I think, I think my mount can outrun goblins. Crescent is more than ready to do so. It hardly has any space to make a swift turn. A goblin tries to stab with a pointed stick, but it's too blunt. On the head, is weak. They pierce through the skin. The shadowing beast behind you sound victorious, but they would never be able to catch up with a palfrey. They may spend the entire day feasting on such a large animal. All right. Yeah, yeah. I could have fought them. I could have gone further, but I genuinely feel like there was no need for a fight. Of course, I'm kind of quiet. The wild here... Wait. The wild plants here need about two... Oh, okay. 
So can I come back here in like two weeks? Yeah, so there's no point in me fighting. I could come back maybe someday. But yeah, let's go to the east and let's go to the end. Uh, Crescent trots with ease, unbothered by the few branches covered in the beaten road. The birds sing and distant howls draw your attention to the forest, which gets sparser and brighter. You spot boars, roe deer, and uh, saurians. The sight of a nearby wolf pack worries you. Once you push your hips forward and your paw reaches a cantier, the beasts don't even begin a pursuit. The speed alone will protect you from any dangers. No stone taller, taller than the trees. Let's go. And this is the end. Okay, I'm gonna stop here because I feel like it's gonna get a lot more. Hopefully when we go in this end, who knows? We could ask them about the locked box maybe and um, see if they know. Oh, it's the, we got the, oh guys, yeah. Uh, you can't open it without damaging the fire ports. Like, 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 shake for a bitch. I guess we find that the code is tightly. You can't. Yeah, I don't. I didn't want to open it because it could be somebody. I might find that person who might have abandoned the box. They might thank me or something. So yeah, this game. It, oh, so we. Oh, okay. There's eight save slots. So this this is also a game where you can save before making a choice. Uh, so you can so we can go through a bunch of different routes. Okay, okay, so I know that now, so this is gonna be my first save, so we can uh, make it go to different routes. This game is really cool. I expected the game to be some just type of text adventure, and I was like, okay, it sounds kind of fun, just something to go through. The fact that I can find stuff by putting text in, and there's different scenarios that go through a lot, I have to avoid nighttime, I have a time limit. This game, I feel like it's gonna be a, quite a big part of the channel, because it seems really fun. So I can't wait to get back into it. Hopefully, we'll uh, get into it soon, because it seems really fun. But yeah, I hope you guys sincerely enjoyed this video. This is Moonlight Detective, and I'll see you in the next case.